Hey everyone, Mary from SVG Cuts here, and I'm really excited about these really cute little Easter and spring projects that I have today. And we had some of these for Christmas and winter, so I thought, wouldn't it be so fun and so cute to make some cute little ones for Easter and spring? So of course we have our cute little Easter egg shaped box house. And you could put something inside and give it to someone, or you could just display it as it is, just as a cute little decoration. So I really think any kind of pastel paper will totally work for this. And you can just go to town and have a blast creating your own little cute village. And another cool thing about this is no matter what mat size you're using, you can make all of these little projects. So we also have our cute little mushroom here, and again, you could put something inside, or you could just make it just as a cute little decoration. So I really like these because I think they're, they're vintage inspired, like those little paper Christmas houses that you see. I was just at an antique store yesterday and I saw a cute little Christmas, little Christmas one too. So we also have this plain one, which I think is cool because you can make it for any, you know, any season or holiday or occasion or whatever. Just depending on what kind of paper and embellishments you use, it can really look different like for fall or Christmas or really whatever. So in continuing with the vintage inspired theme, we also have two really pretty elegant cards and they're also vintage inspired. And I think if you if you want to make something real cutesy, then that's totally different. But if you want to make something more elegant, then I think this is this is kind of the ticket. I think it's really pretty and it has a lot of like motion on the front of it. So it's easy because you just let your machine cut out the pieces for you. You pick your paper, obviously, and then you just have fun gluing it together. Or, of course, you can also use each element separately and design your own completely different card or scrapbook page or whatever. So again, another vintage-inspired design here with lots of dimension, and I used a lot of pop dots behind each shape to really pop everything out and make it look really interesting and, and really pretty. So this time, I found some really fun spring paper here, and I pretty much used all of it up, so all I have left here is this little one. It's by We Are Memory Keepers, and it's called Simply Spring, and it's just really fun little pretty pastel patterns, and one of them is even a bunch of eggs hanging, so it's definitely Easter themed as well as <clears throat> just spring, and you could use whatever leftovers you have for birthdays or kids' parties or whatever. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how these go together, so let me show you. For both of these cards, they're, they're so simple to assemble, I don't need to show you step by step how that works because you can figure it out. But as far as the eye goes on the bunny and on the chick, how I did it was I took a brown marker, I just happened to have this Copic marker, but really any kind of brown marker is going to look good. And all I did was I drew a circle inside his eye and I left a little bit of it white. And if you look closely, it's completely not perfect, so don't feel like 
stressed out that you have to make it so perfect because it's going to be fine. And then on the chick, there's actually two little lines cut by your machine, which you can use as a guide to draw your circle and just leave a little bit of empty space in the middle. So for the egg house and the mushroom house, they're both sitting on round boxes, as you can see. And they're different sizes, but they go together the same way. So I just took the smaller round box here from the egg, and I've got my bottom cut out, which is just two circles and a long piece, and then the top is also two circles and a long piece. And although they're shaped slightly differently, they go together the same way as well. So I'm just going to show you how the lid works. So now I've got my long piece wrapped around here and you can see that on this side there's a tab sticking out and I just want to put glue all over this one little tab here. I'm going to use that to glue it to itself here and I'm just doing my best to line it up properly and I'm going to hold it while it still dries and I'm going to start bending each of these tabs over. And then all I need to do is put glue on every single one of these tabs, put glue all the way out to the edge and all over the tabs. And then I want to take the larger of the two circles and I want to place it on top and adjust it as I need to make it as, as perfectly lined up as possible. And then if you find that once it dries, parts of it are sticking out, because it's, it's kind of difficult to make it like scientifically perfect when you glue it onto itself. So if some of it is sticking out, you can take a piece of sandpaper and just lightly sand the edges to give it a nice finished look. And then you want to take your smaller circle and just go ahead and glue that inside to finish it off. Next for our rectangular shaped box here, it's super simple also, <clears throat> and the, the lid and the bottom go together the same way. So I have my lid or my bottom here, <clears throat> which is two pieces like this, and a larger rectangle and a smaller rectangle. And then the lid is the same principle, two pieces like this, a larger and a smaller rectangle. So let's start by putting glue on the side tab of either of these two pieces. They're identical, so it doesn't matter which one you start with. And I'm only going to show you the lid because the bottom works the same way. So then go ahead and put glue on the other tab. Put that in place. And now you just want to put glue on all four of these tabs, being sure that your glue goes all the way out to the corners and then grab the larger of the two rectangles, glue that on top. You can always flip it over, obviously, to press down, and then put your smaller rectangle inside to finish it off. So now for our cute little house. This one is pretty quick and simple to put together. I've got the main piece of my house, which I'm just going to glue together like this with some glue on the side tab. And I want to give it a couple seconds to start drying here. And then all we want to do is we've got our roof here, which is quite simple. And since this paper is white core, which means when you bend it, you can see the white in the middle, if you want to take a blue ink pad and rub that, or you know, whatever color your paper is, I think that adds a nice finishing touch. So to put the roof on, all I want to do is put glue on all of these tabs here, all the way out to the corners. And I'm just going kind of quick here. If you want to be a little more precise with your glue, you can. And then I just want to place it right on top. And I'm just, I'm kind of feeling around to make sure that it's basically centered as far as front to back goes. And once it starts to take hold, I can reach inside and push it down from the inside too to make sure that it's all perfect inside there. So now, 
When, when it comes time to glue it to the box, obviously we just put glue on all four of these tabs and just glue it right on top of the box. And then as far as this little awning piece goes, all we want to do is put some glue on the back side of it. And we'll just place it right on top. You probably want to put your door on first so that you can see exactly where you want it to go. But you just need to place it, center it, hold it while it dries a little bit, give it a squeeze, and you're all set. Next for our egg house, I've got the main pieces of the egg here. And as you can see, there's a number on the bottom of each piece. Now, it's dark on mine because I took a marker and I drew them on top. But if you look closely at yours, you'll see that your machine has cut a number as well on the bottom of each piece. So you want to go ahead and lay them out in order. And then all we're going to do is start gluing them together one piece at a time. And the way that I think is the best way to do that is to put glue on all, all the side tabs of one piece. It doesn't matter which one you start with as long as they are going in order. And as you can see, I'm just taking one, one tab at a time and I'm lining it up and then I'm moving on to the next one and I'm just making my way down the line of tabs here. And this, this glue works really well for this because it, it dries pretty quickly so I don't have to wait too long while it dries before I move on to the next tab as I go up. So all I'm going to do is the same exact thing with each, each different piece all the way down the line. So they're shaped slightly differently from each other, but it's the, the same principle. They all have tabs on the side, and you just do this to all of them, going all the way down the line of pieces that you have here. So I'm just, again, I'm just lining it up, <coughs> giving it a little bit of a chance to dry, and moving on to the next <coughs> to the next tab. So you can go ahead and do this all the way down your line of pieces. Just keep following the same principle and glue them all together. So now you can see my egg is starting to take shape here, and all that's left to do is close up the final the final seam in my egg. So again, same principle, no, no tricks or anything, just, just gluing all of these tabs one at a time. And it's, it's slightly more challenging than it was um, leading up to this point, but it's, it's not too bad because I can totally stick my hand inside. And it kind of falls into place pretty well itself too. So now I've got my panels laid out here to finish off my egg. And as you can see, these three are shaped the same way. They're like symmetrical and they're identical. They go on the back. Then we've got two that have a straight edge on the sides of them. And then we've also got three pieces like this. So what we're going to do is take this this larger of the three smaller ones, and that's going to go right here. So to glue that on, I don't need to put glue on the whole entire thing, just the top like half inch and the bottom half inch, because we want it to have a nice curve. And I'm going to just glue it right on top, right on the face here of my egg. And once it starts to take hold, I can curve it and hold the top part while it dries too. So I'm going to use that same principle of only putting glue on the, the bottom half inch and the top half inch. And I'm going to put these smaller ones on like this. 
and this other one goes on this side. And then we've got the ones with the straight edge. This one has a straight edge on this side, and as you can see, it fits right here. And you know that it goes there, because if you, if you tried to put it over here, you could see that it doesn't line up. So then all that's left to do is put these final three pieces on the back here, like so. And again, using the same principle of just gluing the top and the bottom in place to give it a nice curve. And then finally, we've got our little awning here. And all we're going to do is put glue on the back side of it and just glue it right in the center, as you can see, just right here. Now finally for our mushroom, we've got 12 pieces that look like this, and we've also got 12 pieces that look like this. And now they could have they could have just been all one piece like this, because that's how they go together, but it would have been too hard to glue it together. So we're going to start by gluing all 12 of these together around in a circle. So to do that, I'm going to put glue on all of the side tabs of this piece here. And all 12 pieces are identical, so it doesn't matter what order they go in, or which one you grab first, or whatever. <coughs> and I'm just going to start on one end. I like to start at the bottom, but whatever floats your boat. And I'm just going one at a time, and gluing one tab at a time, giving it a chance to dry as I move on to its neighbor until I have worked my way all the way from the bottom to the top. So go ahead and repeat that with the rest of your 12 pieces. So I've got all 12 pieces almost completely glued together here and all that's left to do is finish off this seam here. So now if I push it together it kind of helps me get in there a little bit so if that helps you, go for it. And again, I'm just going to put glue on all of these tabs. And it's just a little bit trickier to get in there. So I'm going to squeeze it. And as I get up to the top, it's kind of hard to get in there. But as long as I get like one little dot of glue in there, that is good enough. So again, I'm just going to Go one tab at a time, and squeeze it together from the inside. And I really need to make sure that it's drying before I move on to the next one, because if it wants to pull apart and have a mind of its own a little bit. But the further I go, the more it sort of falls into place. And I can push from the inside, and there we go. So next with our, our 12 tabs like this, all I'm going to do is put glue on the two side tabs and glue it to its neighbor. And again, each of these is identical, so it doesn't matter which one. So all I'm going to do is work my way down the line. So go ahead and glue all 12 of yours together. So I've got all 12 of mine glued together. Now all I need to do is finish it off with the same technique, just gluing those two tabs and putting it in place. So now I'm going to take the top of my mushroom and you don't have to do this but I think it's cute if you kind of curl up each of these little rounded pieces here. It just kind of looks like like a real mushroom, how it has that kind of like stuff up around the inside. And this is actually extended. I need to pop that in like this. And then I did not even glue mine because it's such a tight fit. I mean, it's not meant to be like a lid that opens and closes. It's just meant to stay permanently in there. So no glue necessary, friction and tightness is enough. So put those two together like this. And then all we need to do is grab our 12 pieces 
like this, and we only need glue on the the top half or half inch or so, and the bottom half inch or so, and I'm gonna line it up on the bottom, give it a chance to start drying, and then curve it, line it up at the top, and hold that while it dries. Go ahead and do that with all 12 pieces. And if you want to add some little dots, you can add your dots. Or if your paper is already polka dotted, it might not be necessary. And then to put it on your box, you just put glue on all of these tabs and just put it right on top of your box. So that's it. Lots of really fun Easter and spring projects. And if you make any of these, I would love to see pictures on our Facebook wall, in our forum, on Instagram, on your blog, or really anywhere. So be sure and share if you make one of these. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.